So there's this new Netflix series called Hilda that's recently come out or is coming out. I'm not too sure. I haven't watched it yet, but it was created by a guy called Luke Pearson, um, who's an illustrator in the UK. And uh, he once came to my uni and gave a talk. But yeah, he basically created this story called Hilda and then submitted it to No Brow Press, which is a um, publisher in the UK and I guess around the world that publishes children's books and also graphic novels and comics and things. They've got, they've got a way of doing submissions where they've got some guidelines for you, a specific criteria that you've got to meet. So I think it's like the, the size of the comic and how many pages. I think it's called like 17 times 23. And I think they're still doing it. I, only, I just found out recently because he's been tweeting about it a lot obviously because it's come to Netflix now about how he first thought and created and drew it and submitted it to this small sort of entry-level comic um, and then they accepted it then they published it as like a little comic it got successful I guess it sold pretty well and then they decided to do a series of books so now I think there's like five or six graphic novels for Hilda, which is awesome. And now he's got a Netflix series and it's coming to the big screen. Not the big screen, the little screen in your room. It's becoming an animated series. My first introduction to No Brow Press was a few years ago. At the time, they, I feel like they were very experimental. There was a lot of printy stuff, a lot of screen printing. That was just my perception of them. More often than not, I've slowly started to see more sort of cartoony, adventure timey style graphic novels, where now No Brow is this amazing publisher. And so seeing someone like Luke Pearson go from their little submission thing to getting published, to getting uh, animated series, it gives me massive inspiration and encouragement to continue with my stuff. You know, I saw some of the illustrations of his first entry and it's it, you can clearly see how his illustration style has improved and like how he's grown as an artist. He also has been talking about how it's been like 10 years and now it's got an animated series. It just goes to show how long these things take. And I always say that. I give that advice to people. I'm constantly telling people that. It's a slow process. People understand. Life goes on and you just got to keep going. If you're true to yourself, then good things will come. That's my belief. What little time I do have to spare on drawing and, and, and uh, YouTube stuff, I'm splitting my time between sketching out and planning my graphic novel, Heroes of This Story, whilst also making pixel art animation about the heroes of this story for you. And this is what this video is. Hey, I don't think I'm gonna do loads more of these because I don't wanna spoil the finished animation. Here's a few little shots that I've been working on. I've got a long way to go, but um, be excited. Whenever I have time, I'm doing it. Some shots take longer than others. Whenever I'm working on my graphic novel idea, I've sort of, it's a big project, so you've got to cut it down. You've got to condense it. I'm now working on in a way that I feel happy. You know, I've, I've sort of laid out a little storyline. So I just now need to sort of do the first draft, essentially. I've written a summary. Is that the word? Is it a summary? Synopsis? That's a word. But I've got this really cool new sketchbook. I like small sketchbooks. I also like landscape sketchbooks. So this was like my ideal one. This is a song I wrote, but I can't write music, but I like the words. Um, look at that. Hi, welcome to the story corner with me. I've made my own alphabet. It's like a, you know, it's a symboly language. There's no way of deciphering it. Um, other than this, I love like symbols and things and I love languages and writing. So like, there's this thing, I had this cool idea. Um, to be honest, this is very inspired by Fez. Like the initial uh, concept for this very specific language idea was inspired by the game Fez. If you know Fez, you know that there's a language that they invented. Anyway, my idea is that, right, there's 26 letters in the alphabet in there. Um, what if the way to decipher it, or or maybe the sort of the object that contains this alphabet, is a 26-sided um, thing, a 26-sided dice? No, a 26-sided object, 
which um, on it has the uh, the words, the letters uh, imprinted. So if you find this, I keep wanting to say cube, but it's not a cube. I think a 26-sided thing is called a rhombicube, rhombicube, a hedron? <laughs> rhombicube hexahedron. I, I don't know. So like if you find this object, it will be the key to unlocking and writing this language. Then another cool thing that I thought is, so how, how would we as the reader decipher or a character um, decipher what this language says if this is some ancient language? Well, do you know those things? What are they called? Um, the ones that are like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Pangram. Do you know what a pangram is? A pangram is a sentence that contains all of the letters of the alphabet. So it's a single sentence, I guess. But yeah, I looked up pangrams and I found one that was really cool. And it goes like this. Sphinx of black courts, judge my vow. Uh, so it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, you know, it's a lot of symbolism there. It's pretty epic sounding. Pretty fantastical, pretty weird, pretty cool. So if somewhere in the story, Sphinx of Black Quartz Judge My Vow is written in the language, uh, then you would be able to sort of, if someone told you what it said, you would then know every letter. You'd be able to work it out, which is pretty cool. That's the end of this little bit. So that's the type of stuff that I like doing. Uh, I also like, you know, drawing symbols and landscapes and more things and yeah this is a little thing about inktober uh this year it, for inktober october's coming up and inktober is when you do a drawing every day uh last year i did poncho pilgrims in which i designed a little character every day based off the word prompts by jake spicer and i'm gonna do it again but this time i'm gonna make it look like a card game or like tarot cards or like picture cards so there'll be characters still. It's gonna look like a trading card game. So it's gonna be like, collect them all. Fun. Huh? Fun. It's a bit of fun. Fun abound. Here on this channel, the Poncho Pilgrim. That's about everything. Go to my Instagram, it's Harry Sussums, at Harry Sussums. Um, but just so you know, at the end of this video, if you hadn't noticed, I know a lot of people probably don't even stay for the whole video, but on my wall, on the end screen, where it has a link to another video and a subscribe, it also has written my PSN, so add me on PSN, it's the King Kazma, and it also has my Instagram handle, if you didn't notice. I hope you're doing well out there. Stories to be told, things to be made. I had a pretty hectic day at work yesterday, so this is a message for you. Um, treat sales assistants like human beings because we are human beings. I think a lot of people come in and they just think that the people working there are just faceless robots. One part psychologist, one part symbols for the company that we're working for, and one part slave. So don't treat them like that. Uh, be a better person. It's normally older people. Normally when kids come in, sometimes you get some douchey kids. But when, normally when young people come in, uh, they're, they're much nicer. Old people who, who suck. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this pixel art. I recently started a new, new game with my friend. I feel like co-op stories and RPGs are sorely lacking in the world. Divinity Original Sin 2 just came out and it's sweet and it's so Dungeons and Dragons-y and it's real freaking fun. Anyway, have a good day. I'm home alone at the moment for this weekend. Katie's doing some business. <laughs> What? She's working. I'm home alone. You can tell yesterday was a pretty hectic day um, because I went to the shop and I bought five apples and then I got home and I realized I already had five apples. So, <clears throat> so now I just got 10 apples.